So what's the deal with smart plugs? Do you need them and how useful are they actually? I've been using six different smart plugs over the last few months and I've come up with a way to help you figure out what to do with the smart plug if you decide to get one or, you know, several. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of smart plugs and give you examples of how to use them in the living room, bedrooms, office, as well as the kitchen. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. Now, first of all, a smart plug will basically turn any appliance Smart, smart in the sense that you can remotely control the power going to that appliance. Or using some of the automations, you can put a smart plug on an appliance so that when you leave the house, that appliance or automatically turns on or off. Or being able to attach it to a bunch of like TVs and entertainment equipment and have everything turn off at you know 11 p.m. so that you don't waste your money on phantom power, power that the electronics still draw but you don't get any benefit from. Now, it might not be worth to put it on every single appliance and certain appliances might not work very well if it's like I'm looking at the toaster oven over here. I don't think I would put a smart plug on that appliance, but you know, an appliance that I constantly have to walk to is my dehumidifier downstairs to turn it on and off. So it might be worthwhile for me, or actually it is very worthwhile for me to slap a smart plug on it. One of the very first things I put a smart plug on was my Ghetto Product close-up lights. Now I've been using these lights since 2012 and they take a few minutes to warm up their CFLs, which I kind of find annoying because I'll film a review and then immediately want to start editing the close-up shots and I have to wait like five minutes. Using a smart plug has allowed me to remotely turn on the lights a few minutes before I actually need them so I don't have to waste any time. Now, depending on your setup with your smart plugs, you can even control these devices outside of your home. If you're wondering how else to do that, check out that video, and I've got a ton of other content or introduction videos to smart lights, smart light switches, as well as smart sensors. Now, the biggest pro for a smart plug, in my opinion, is the ability to remotely control something. That, that just seems stupid that I've just said that. But that ability allows you to make your house safer, allows you to save time, and it allows you to save money, which are, you know, I guess, during this day and time, or to money and time are very important things. The biggest con, and this is kind of stretching it, is that I get less exercise now that I've got these smart plugs because instead of going downstairs and turning on the product shot lights and coming back upstairs to finish the rest of the video or whatever I need to do, I can save those one to two stairs of flight so my Fitbit or my Apple Watch to uh, health things, my circles aren't gonna close as quickly. But that's kind of not a bad thing because I'll just make it up working out a little bit more at the gym, which is probably something more enjoyable than stomping up and down a set of stairs because you're pissed off because you have to turn on a bunch of CFL lights. Now you might be thinking that price is going to be a con because these plugs range between $40 and $60, but depending on how you use it, a $50 plug will pay for itself in about six months. Another feature is the ability to control Alexa, the smart plug using lights. your voice, either through Siri or uh, Alexa. It, it, this is all kind of very Siri, neat, um, but am I, I'm still very uncomfortable talking to my smartphone or talking to something that isn't a human being. So that's basically the three minute intro to smart plugs. If you want to know what I think is the best smart plug, do check out the top five smart plugs for HomeKit video. So let's get started with the living room. Where can you use a smart plug? In a room where most people spend their nights. Lamps are always an easy thing to use with a smart plug, especially if the lamp is in a hard to reach area, but I would kind of stay away from the lamps and elaborate in a minute. In my living room, I can have a plug controlling these two lamps, which is kind of handy since the lamp in that one corner is a tad annoying to turn off, um, but I personally would use a smart light bulb in this instance as it offers the same remote control functionality and if you spend the same amount of money, like 50 bucks, you can get one that changes color which means you can control the mood of the room. For me, I would definitely put a smart plug on the entertainment system. Every appliance in your home draws power even though it's not officially on. My TV right now is off but it's still plugged into the socket and so it's still drawing power because well the moment you turn on your TV it comes on so that power is always there and that phenomenon we'll say is called phantom power and if you do uh, you do a bit of googling you'll kind of see that over a span of a year maybe a little over a year a large entertainment system will burn through $100 worth of energy. Um, these plugs cost 50 bucks and there's still a bit of phantom power going to it but not as much as your uh, entertainment system will be drawing. Another useful scenario would be controlling, well, remotely controlling or scheduling your Christmas tree lights. 
So on to the bedroom and bathroom. Now with the bedroom, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is the humidifier or atomizer that my wife uses. I kind of have no idea if the atomizer works, but it smells nice. So being able to turn it on without actually having to go upstairs is kind of a nice thing to have, I guess, before heading to bed. Uh, depending on the season, we usually have a humidifier or fan going on. So being able to control these appliances remotely will also be handy. Now I said that lamps are always an easy thing to put a smart plug onto, but I don't think your night lamp needs a smart plug since the on switch is literally right beside you. Again, but I would put a smart light into the night lamp. Why? Because you can set the smart bulb to wake you up naturally like the sunrise rather than the standard alarm clock. The biggest smart plug winner in the bedroom or bathroom would be anything that could be a fire hazard, like a hair curler or a hair straightener. I've spoken to enough uh, female people in my life to know that they are always worried if they use the hair curlers and hair straighteners, they're always worried or they're always curious to know if they've turned the device off, on or off. And so with a smart plug, or it kind of depends on how your bathroom is set up. If the plug is uh, set to your light switch, then that's kind of easier. You can get a smart switch to make sure that the lights are off. Or if that's not the case for you, you get a smart plug and you can always check to see if there's power, right? You can always make sure, even if you're at the office out of your home, you can make sure that it's turned off. And so that's a great safety precaution or a safety use for these smart plugs, I think. Well, not I think, I definitely know. Now, how about the office? Like the living room, you could save a few bucks by having a smart plug turn off all your monitors and hard drives at a certain time. The plug would pay for itself pretty quickly, I do believe. You can also set up a geofence that would turn off everything in your office when you leave or turn on when you get close or arrive at the office. Now, like the bedroom, there are different appliances that get used during the season in my office. For example, during the spring and summer, my basement becomes quite humid, so, well, humidifier needs to go on. During the winter time, well, the fan needs to go on. So, being able to control these things remotely or set a time for them to come on or set a geofence for me, for them to come on when I leave the house or vice versa, is very, very handy. Now there's another use case for these smart plugs for an office setting and that comes and that deals with the printer. I bought a Eve, not this one, this is an Eve Energy, but Eve also has a room sensor and it detects volatile organic compounds. And I turned it on, set it downstairs and within like 20 minutes it was telling me that the air quality in my basement office was incredibly poor. And it was because the printer was spewing out volatile organic compounds. The moment I turned the printer off, the volatile organic compounds apparently disappeared and the air quality in my basement now is spectacular. But the problem is that the printer, well the power switch is in an odd place now in order for me to turn it on. I have to do a bit of acrobatics. I can solve that problem with the uh, smart plug. I can just set it so that I, when I need the printer, I can just turn it on using my phone. I don't have to do any sort of acrobatics. So how would I use the smart plug in the kitchen? Um, for me, I, I generally wouldn't because I think the kitchen is probably one of the most limiting and dangerous options for smart plugs. The only time I would use a smart plug is with a slow cooker to ensure my slow cooked food doesn't get too rubbery after it finishes cooking. My slow cooker will default to a warm setting which kind of keeps cooking the food so I can use a smart plug to turn off the unit completely. Now I say it's a little dangerous because, well, <laughs> You can set it so that the slow cooker turns on after a while, but that means you've got raw food sitting basically at room temperature for however long. Um, or after it cooks, um, you know, the, the moment the food stops cooking, the spoiling process kind of begins. And so you kind of, it's just not a great situation to use a smart plug in. But one of the neater things that you can do is create an automation so that the moment that you turn on your hair dryer upstairs, the water kettle turns on so that the moment you come downstairs, you've got warm water for your coffee or your tea. I guess that's pretty useful. So that's basically the introduction to smart plugs. I go into a lot more detail about these products. Um, I've got a top five list as well, so do check out that video or my website as I've got all that content listed in a readable format as well. If you have any questions, I'll leave them in the comments section below. If this is the first time you're watching one of my smart home videos, do subscribe as I produce, uh, I'll try to produce contents one to two times a week. And I'll also include recipes for you to try. So things that I think might be useful to do in terms of, you know, auto automating your house. Um, this is Monty the Ho, he is my co-host, and he, well, his entire role is just to help me live in my house. <laughs> Thanks for watching.